Hello everyone and welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video and today's Kerbal Space Program video is a very exciting one for me because this is a mission I've wanted to do for years, like since I basically started playing this game and was aware of what a monarch uh, was. I I've always liked the idea of building a base hanging underneath the monarch, by the way that is what we're doing. I'm assuming I put that in the title and thumbnail so I didn't, you know, say that straight away. But yes, in today's video, I'm going to build a base that hangs underneath the monarch. Now it's going to uh, happen in a few phases. We need to do a scouting mission to kind of get the infrastructure in place on the archway first. That's what, that's the mission I'm building here. And then we'll do a second mission where we send the base itself to go and, you know, attach itself to the underside of the arch. So there'll be like chapters you can just look at in the description or indeed on the, uh, the video player bars if you want to skip ahead to any particular point but that's that's what we're doing and yes I've wanted to do this mission for a very long time because uh, ever since I was a young ruffian back in maybe 2014 I think when I started playing this game I noticed people were like making these uh, bases suspended underneath the monarch using mods it's always been impossible to do in stock Kerbal Space Program now there is a bit of an asterisk there uh, I think one or two people have made stock Mun arch bases in the past by basically building a giant ring structure that goes around the entire arch and it's super I admire the dedication that's uh, that's incredible and I just feel like that would be very basically asking for a Kraken attack it'd be very very difficult to do and I feel like it would really it was not something that interested me basically I wanted something that looked nice and clean like the modded Mun arch bases were where it was just a single hook on the Mun arch that then the base hung underneath. I didn't really want this big janky metal thing going around the whole arch. It didn't, wasn't what I wanted. So I just resided myself to the fact that I would just never be able to do this mission because there is no way of executing that without mods of some description. And before anyone asks in the comment section, you cannot use the claw to, uh, to attach to the underside of the arch. The claw just doesn't grab onto it. So um, yes, I just resided myself to just being never being able to do this mission until the most recent Kerbal Space Program update came out, which was just uh, yesterday, I think, for me. Uh, and that added the ground anchor piece to the game. And it also added another piece that I forgot to mention. Uh, and now it's gone past, so I'm just going to quickly backtrack a little bit. We've got uh, a reskin of the Reliant and Swivel engines. They always looked a bit bad by comparison to the other engines in Kerbal Space Program, so it's nice they've had a facelift, and that's why for the first stage of this rocket, I kind of had an unusual en engine choice. I used three swivel engines surrounded by a circle of Reliant engines, just to showcase, you know, what the new engines look like. Great that I said this after the engines have long gone, but just thought I'd mention that. You guys probably saw that. Uh, it's what, hey, those engines look pretty nifty, and yes, those are those are stock engines. This is going well, isn't it? This commentary. Uh, where did I get to? Oh, yes. In the latest update, as well as the reskin of the engines, we had the ground anchor piece. Now, this was supposed to come out in the last, last update that was meant to be the final update on final approach, but squad said they couldn't quite get the ground anchor piece to work properly. I'm not sure why they couldn't get it to work properly or what specifically was happening, but long and short of it was that it got delayed for a future update coming on some unknown nebulous date. But that date was yesterday for me, so a few days ago for you guys. And we now have the ground anchor piece. Now what the ground anchor piece does is that it anchors into the ground. And I hope that's all you need to know. <laughs> no, of course, you basically, you, it's like a piece that you could get a Kerbal out on EVA and they can pick up this piece and place it into the ground and it anchors itself into the ground using four bolts that drive into the surface. You can then use an engineer Kerbal to attach pieces to this uh, ground anchor. So uh, obviously you are a bit limited in what pieces you can use because uh, engineer Kerbals can't place every single type of piece in the game. Like you can't add a, you know, Mark III cockpit to the ground anchor to make a surface base that way. Can't do that. But what you can do is you can use like scaffolding pieces like the girders to kind of build a little structure out away from the anchor. And then you can place a docking port at the end of this appendage that you've just built. And then you can dock whatever you want to the thing. So that's how you can kind of use it to support bases. So... My plan is we're going to use this rocket here that I'm uh, elegantly flying. did a little backflip there because I pressed auto, um, auto SAS onto prograde by accident. But we're flying this little rocket. We're going to land on top of the Mun Arch and place a ground anchor and some scaffolding 
uh, to the side of the arch. And then we're going to do another mission where we do the, the really difficult bit, which is uh, go <laughs> flying a base to kind of underneath this point and then piloting it up so it's docks with the docking port. And it was very, this is one of the most difficult missions I've done in KSP for quite some time. So I hope you enjoy watching my suffering. Don't worry, I am going to speed the footage up. But yeah, this took me hours and hours and hours in real time. In real time. Uh, not only because it was a very difficult mission to do, but also because I had to do it twice. Oh, nearly, uh, nearly lost the ship just there. I had to do it twice. The first time I, the first iteration of the base, I literally just could not get it to dock underneath the anchor at all. We'll talk about that more or more. Uh, when I come to designing the base, when I can kind of discuss some of the things. Now, some of you might be aware or uh, might be under the misguided belief that you can't place the ground anchor on flat ground. No, I said that wrong. You can't place the ground anchor on sloped ground. The anchor will just slide away. And you are technically correct, but if you place a flag on a slope and then place the anchor just up from the flag, the flag will stop the anchor's slide dead in its tracks and gives it enough time for its drills to sink into the ground and hold it in place. There might be other ways of achieving this. I initially tried doing this with a Kerbal, but the Kerbal provided no collision detection for the anchor. It went straight through the Kerbal. But as you can see, it kind of hooks itself onto the flag and stops. And there we have it. A beautiful sideways mounted um ground anchor. Now ideally the best solution would be to have the ground anchor on the actual underside of the arch but I couldn't really figure out a way of doing this elegantly without constructing some sort of massively kraken attack uh, friendly tower basically uh, like a proper scaffolding like building up a big tower so that Kerbal can stand on top of the tower and maybe jank it. I was talking to Shadow Zone on Discord and he suggested maybe putting the ground anchor on a piston. The piston pushes up but I was like you know what Sometimes the simplest solution is best. So this is the solution that I came up with. And this is it. We have our anchor support there. We've got our, our docking port. And I made sure I zoomed the camera out and made sure that our uh, arm that the docking port is attached to is definitely clear of the arch. There's not like a ridge underneath it that will prohibit anything from docking to the, the docking port there. But that's it. That's basically phase one of the mission complete. I've got to add a couple of little bells and whistles to the top of the arch just it oh <laughs> started to slide off just that would have been a disaster if it did slide off because uh bill kerman that i'm you i think that's bill kerman isn't it bill kerman's the engineer isn't it i think you'd think you'd think after all these years i would know what roles bill bob and jeb and jeb had well i mean i knew jebediah and valentino the pilots but it's always bill and bob that i mess up and i think it's because of bradley Whiston's. Uh, Odyssey by Bill series that I know Bill is the engineer. That's genuinely the reason. I really hope that he is the engineer now and I've not just made a complete fool of myself. Not that that's um, anything I have to seriously worry about anymore because of the frequency in which I, I do that. But I'm getting a bit off topic here. <laughs> uh, I'm adding a few bells and whistles to the top of the arch just in case I wanted to come back later and maybe add some more structures up here. We've got a couple of anchors there ready to go. We can get a curb and move them about should we need them because knowing me I'll forget to bring them on future expeditions so there we've got an emergency supply of ground anchors and off we go now you might be uh, a bit concerned that we've not got enough delta v in this vessel but don't worry we do uh, just for whatever reason the fuel tanks I've got inside the cargo bays of the cockpit aren't adding to the on-screen delta because they're not being drained basically so I can just pump the fuel manually into those external tanks and hey presto we've got enough fuel to get back to cabin and build the uh build the station itself. Now just going back to my uh, ground anchor life hack where um, you can use a flag to stop it from sliding down. If anyone has any other kind of quirks that you've discovered that let you place ground anchors in ways that squad might not necessarily have wanted you to place them such as you know, upside down or on a vertical cliff face or something like that do let me know because I am I've only just started using the part like today when I filmed this mission it was the first time I used the part so I'm definitely gonna get some practice in with it try out a few different things one thing I'd like to do is maybe have a a mohole base that kind of extends from the side of the mohole over the mohole we have a big base in the middle I did a mohole base way back in 2016 or 2017 I think it was 2017 I did a mohole base and it didn't really work that well because at the time we didn't have any ground anchor pieces or anything so I had to have this big structural thing that just sort of spanned the, uh, the width of the mohole deep down, and it, it kind of worked, but it didn't really work that well. Like, it was, it got crack and attacked constantly, and I can no longer revisit that base because uh, it will just glitch out whenever you load the save. The physics easing doesn't really work that well. So it would be nice to have something a bit more, you know, 
functional. So I think the ground anchor would be a good way of doing that, a mohole base. And if you guys have got any other ideas for cool bases that have been, you know, cool base ideas that have now been opened up to us with the ground anchor, then do again, let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm very devoid of creativity and I always love hearing the suggestions from you. The peasants, I mean the viewers, of course, that was a joke, I'm just going to clarify now because I know uh, I don't always get the sarcasm quite right and people think I'm being sincere, but no, um, let's just uh, try and claw my way out of this hole that I've dug myself. Here you can see me building the Mun Arch base, and yes, I think I'm right in saying that this is the very first, very first stock Mun Arch base ever built in Kerbal Space Program with the ground anchor. Um, was what I wanted to say. And then some Redditor. Ooh, what's his name? Oh, I'm gonna just open up Reddit now and have a look. Some Redditor. Literally, the same time that I finished building mine, posted something to the Kerbal Space Program subreddit, which is now loading on my second monitor as I continue this commentary. Ah, oh, left side right. You. Ah, oh, it's got 867 upvotes. Well, now it's got 866 upvotes because I just downvoted. No, I'm just kidding. It was a really good mun base. Uh, but yes, yeah, some guy on Reddit <laughs> uh, managed to get the first uh, uh, hanging mun arch base. But hopefully I can be the first, you know, a British YouTuber and whiskey enthusiast to make a hanging mun arch base and upload it to YouTube uh, on the channel Matt Lown. I think I'm I think I'm pretty safe in getting that record. Anyway, since this base is more of a proof of concept than anything else, I wasn't 100% sure if this was actually going to work. So I didn't want to go overboard with the actual design of this base. So I kept it fairly simple, basically just a single column featuring the laboratory and some habitation modules. And of course, it was very important to get that downward facing observatory, just so couples can look at the ground uh, from that perspective rather than from the sides of the balcony, which would be a bit more comfortable considering the chair position inside that observatory. But I don't know, glass floor, like have you ever been to like a tower expedition, not expedition, um, e exhibition, not expedition, a, a, a tall tower, uh, at least the ones I've been to. I've been to the Eiffel Tower, I've been to the Blackpool Tower, and I've been to the Shard in, in London. And I think, I know the Blackpool Tower has a bit where the floor is glass and you can look down. I can't remember the others, but I think it must be a, feature in some attractions where you're in a tall place there's a glass floor to look down I know there's those bridges in places like the Grand Canyon might have one I can't remember <laughs> either way a glass bottom floor is a cool thing to have in for things such as a hanging mun arch base we got there in the end thank you ever so much for bearing with me for that as you can see we've got some wheels underneath this base now they are attached two decouplers so you probably figured out that I don't intend to have these attached when we're suspended underneath the base but underneath the arch sorry but the first attempt I did of this mission you know when I said earlier this was take two first time I tried this I'm like I don't need wheels or anything I'm just I'm good enough you know I'll just fly the base there achieve hover underneath the mun arch and then just fly up and dock with the the anchor crane pylon piece whatever it's whatever I'm gonna call it I'm gonna dock with that and it's all fine and I quickly realized that that was not a good that was not a smart uh, it was very very difficult I spent maybe like 45 minutes persevering like oh I, just, I can do it I could do it but I gave up in the end uh, and said I said you we probably need some means of being able to drive this thing underneath the archway to exactly underneath where the docking port is and then just fly straight up and dock to it would be really easy. Uh, it wasn't easy, it was very difficult, but uh, the, the wheels definitely did help in a, making this thing a little bit more, I guess, possible. I'm sure some people out there have managed to do it without having wheeled rovers and I'm sure I'd like to think that if I had enough time in the world, I could eventually get this thing to dock with the ground anchor pylon. I'm going to call it the hook. It's going to be called the hook from now on. I could get it to dock with the hook uh, if I tried long enough, but quite frankly, I just ran out of patience. And I thought, you know, what, let's just let's just call it quits, rewind, build the base again, add some wheels, and then we can drive it underneath the arch and it would be a bit easier. And that's that's why there are wheels there. Oh, that took a very long time to explain what was in reality not a very long point I needed to make. Uh, as for the rest of the rocket, I've got way too much fuel for a man landing and that's because I wanted lots and lots of fuel to actually play around with trying to get the docking right. I wanted like 500 meters per second of delta V just to try and get 
the docking with the hook because it was very difficult to do as you will see from the footage you're about to watch. I will speed the footage up obviously and cut out all of the attempts I didn't manage to dock but even still it's still as you can see from the length of this video we're only halfway through the video yet we've done most of the mission we've got the anchor in place we've got the hook in place we've built the base I'm just gonna be well I'm looking at the timeline it's gonna cross fade across to the launch in just a second as I add some cargo pieces we can play some golf using the EVA science on that balcony among a myriad of other things um, we'll get to those as we do the myriad of other things. Here you can see me launching the rocket. It's certainly one of the more interesting rockets I've launched. I mean, you could say it looks almost normal if it weren't for that gigantic pylon sticking out the top of the fairing. Uh, I was able to do the fairing the way it is. <laughs> that, could have really, that could have really done with scripting that sentence, couldn't it? I was able to build the fairing like this because you may have noticed that in the time lapse, as I built that scaffold structural piece at the top, I added a little orange part that I could then close a fairing around so I didn't have to have a gigantic massive tool fairing around the entire structure. I could just have the upper scaffold which really is just going to be the bit that the base hangs from. That could just be exposed like some ridiculous launch escape system looking thing that's obviously way too tall. Despite it looking a bit goofy I think it looks a bunch nicer than it would have been had I encased the entire thing in a fairing. Uh, hopefully Hopefully you agree. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we're coming towards the end of the ascent. I'm going to deploy the fairing in just a second. As you can see, I'm just uh, I've got the little apoapsis and perhaps indicators on the top left of the screen so you can keep track of what I'm doing. Uh, I hope that's helpful. And I feel like I've talked about, you know, um, the relevant thing. I think like somewhere in the, you know, stream that was the last 16 minutes and 40-ish seconds, uh, I covered all the basics I needed to cover. So now I can just, I guess this is now my opportunity to just talk about whatever I want. And today, guys, um, now I'm like panicking because I'm, I'm building up this intro, intro whilst I frantically try and think of something to talk about. Uh, I have had a couple of weeks off. It's been my, it was my birthday last week. I thought I'd just take two weeks off work because uh, I'm not going to go anywhere. I mean, I live in a fairly touristy area. I live in the southwest of England. We've got nice sunny weather. We've got beaches nearby. Just have a nice relaxing couple of weeks going to the beach, going on some bike rides, do a bit of kayaking here and there. Uh, subscribe to my second channel, by the way, and you might even get video footage of these things. <laughs> that was a nice segue. Well done, Matt. But Matt, when you're proof watching this video and you just make sure everything's okay, this is a little, this one's for you. Well done. <laughs> Uh, also, guys, remember to like the video and subscribe. Uh, really helps me out and all that. Anyway, we're getting a bit off topic here. Uh, not that we're really on topic. I just said this is my opportunity now to just rattle about whatever I want. But even so, I still managed to ramble off topic. But yes, during these two weeks off, I decided to start playing Yakuza 0. And uh, I bought this game in like 20, well, when it came out on PC. And so that was like 2018, maybe? I, I bought it. I started playing in 2018. And then I, I beat like the first chapter or so. And then I got... Things were happening in my life and I just stopped playing it and then I couldn't get back into it because I'd forgotten everything. So I said, well, I'm just going to leave a couple of years to pass so I just forget all of the story that I've done so far and then we can start again. And I started again. And I've been super into it. Oh, my voice cut out for a second. I've been super into it. And, you know, um, you go to a lot of Japanese restaurants in that game because... Uh, it's it's set in it's set in Japan, and so you go to a lot of Japanese restaurants. And I've been playing this game with my girlfriend Beth, like because it's quite story heavy. We can kind of both play. Like when there's combat and stuff, I take over, and she can just walk around the streets and take part in some of the story missions, things like that. It's a nice game to play together. And we've been going to a lot of the restaurants in the game, which are all Japanese, and we've been getting a bit of a craving for Japanese food. Like I really want to go to a Japanese restaurant. There is a Japanese restaurant where I live in Plymouth. Called Cuckoos. By the way, Cuckoos, if you're watching the management staff, I'm sure big fans of this channel. Um, there you go. There's a shout out. Everyone go to Cuckoos. And Cuckoos now, uh, hopefully this means that I get to eat there for free now forever. That's how this works. Uh, yeah, it's a really nice restaurant. Anyway, it's a Japanese restaurant. And we decided we'd try some sake whilst we're there. Now, I, you know, you, got, you guys know me. I, am a, I've got a, I, I do like a good whiskey, but I do like things like anything with alcohol in it, really. You know, vodka, gin soap you know it's all it's all great to me uh, and i thought but i've never had sake and i thought why not have some sake in this japanese restaurant uh, whilst we're here and get, get the full experience and guys we, we really enjoyed the sake i really hope i'm saying this right i know it's not pronounced sake 
I think it's sake. I don't know where I've heard it pronounced sake. Maybe I've just made all of this up, but I think I think it's pronounced sake. Anyway, again, let's stay focused, Matt. <laughs> By the way, I've landed. Here we are. There's the monarch. Now, now I can go back to... Yeah, so I decided to uh, buy a sake set. So um, the sa I went on Amazon. Sake arrived today. I got some fox. I have no idea what it's called. It came in a silver bottle from Amazon. It was like 30 quid. Uh, well, that arrived today. And I also decided to buy some authentic sa a, a sake drinking set. Because when we got it served in the restaurant, it came in like the proper authentic stone round cup things that you drink sake out of. I don't know if they've got a name. They're like whiskey glasses, but not whiskey glasses. They're for sake. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I'm going to buy some of these. So I bought a pack on Amazon. That's uh, been shipped to the Amazon locker near my house. So uh, once I've done this commentary and hit render, we're going to jump on our bikes, cycle off to the Amazon locker, pick that up, and we're going to have a nice sake now. But it's a proper set. Like, it's not just the cups. It's also the uh, the thing. Great description. Let's try that again. The thing that you put the sake, like, you don't drink it out of the bottle. You pour it into, like, a jug. And the jug sits on top of like a, um, a chamber with a candle in it. So the candle keeps it warm. I'm going to have to, before I, we do this, we're going to like Google how, like what the etiquette is with the jug and the candle. <laughs> like, do you heat it up a little bit or do you just let it sit there and get nice and warm? We noticed that I didn't realize that sake was even drunk warm until we were playing Yakuza. And there was a scene where he was drinking sake and it had steam coming out. And I was like, do they drink sake warm? So um, I guess they do. It wasn't served to us warm in the restaurant. Uh, but, you know, this set comes with a jug that you put over a candle, so maybe that is... So I just need to, I need to know these things. Now, there's probably people writing in the comments about what to do, but that, 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 that won't help me at this point. So don't worry about Googling and writing a comment because um, uh, I, uh, this is going to be tonight. We're going to have a nice whiskey night. No, so used to saying whiskey night. We're going to have a sake night. We might have a Japanese meal. I don't know what we've got in the fridge. I think we've got some chicken. Uh, I've got some rice. And, you know, that's... That's it. Well, I don't. I don't know if we're going to be able to cook an authentic Japanese meal, but I'm just. I'm just excited for the sake. Me personally. Uh, yeah, that's just. That's just something we're doing today. Now here I am. Just go back to screen. You may have noticed I'm now very haphazardly trying to dock with the hook. It was very difficult. Um, I have sped the footage up four times real time speed just to save you the kind of exhaustion of watching me do this in real time. I did consider crossfading to the moment when I actually did it to spare you from all this, but I thought this would be quite fun just to watch me very badly attempt to dock to the hook, and also just to prove that I did in fact do this legitimately, and I didn't just cheat it up and get hack gravity or something just to the point where I got the docking and then just set everything back to normal. I wanted to show you that this is this is raw, unfiltered commentary and video right here. So yes, in the end, I, I, my first approach was just trying to fly straight up and steer it using WASD and using the gimbal of the engines, but that didn't really work. So what I did was I just basically tried to roughly achieve hover, uh, <laughs> achieve hover? roughly achieve hover underneath the hook and then just use the RCS translation, so you know, the JKLI, uh, just to try and shift myself laterally underneath the docking port. Then right as I got hit the docking port, I then just tapped on shift and just moved towards it. This was very, very difficult to do because the engines, I don't know if you can see from the throttle gauge on the nav ball, it's, they're very powerful. It does not take much to start ascending rather than achieve hover. I could have gone back and just changed the thrust limiter of the engines, but at this point I was in the air. I just, I don't have the dexterity and like the skill to do that quick enough without jeopardizing my entire position. So I had to just be very, very gentle with the tapping of the shift and tapping of control. And I've synchronized this perfectly. As you can see, I got it. I, I was like, come on, just grab it. And we got it. We did it. And there it is. Now, I didn't just want the engines still attached to the base because that looks a bit naff. So we can just uh, detach the engines in a very, very safe and OSHA-approved way. This is how NASA would do it, I'm sure. I'm just going to throttle them up. My plan was they would uh, diverge away from the station and fly away and get destroyed. They kind of did the opposite, which I guess makes sense because that's how they're weighted. They're like T-shaped and the, the, the vertical line of the T, that's probably got a name, hasn't it? But you know what I mean. Uh, that faces inwards, so of course that shifts the mass inwards. And it, 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 I should have seen that coming. But the station was fine. The only thing that broke was the magnetometer booms. But I did bring some repair kits with me. So it was um, it was all fine. We'll repair those in just a second. And now we can just deploy these solar panels. Uh, 
really hope I timed that well so it would happen as I said it. But there they are, the solar panels are there. We don't actually need them. I've got RTGs clipped inside that orange piece uh, that's sort of halfway up just below the communications dishes. But the solar panels look cool. And it's nice to have kind of a backup, two sources of power just in case one fails. I know that's not really a problem you need to consider in Kerbal Space Program, but it's nice from a, you know, trying to do things realistically. I say realistically, even though this entire mission has been absurd. There's been nothing realistic. <coughs> nothing. Oh my god, my voice. It's choking. I do apologize for that, everyone. I've just paused my commentary and had a drink of water. I'm back. Uh, I mention this a lot to the point where it's now starting to get memed. <laughs> is that I mentioned how my, how my office is just very hot. But it's hot, guys. You guys don't understand. It's so warm. Uh, you can look at Insta go on my Instagram. There you are. Gonna, there's a link to my social media on screen. There they all are. You can join my Discord, Reddit, blah, blah, blah. But on my Instagram, I posted the picture of my office and hopefully that illustrates that it's very warm because it's small and it's got foam all over the walls. And just trying to justify myself, really. There's the base, by the way. Let's just play some golf uh, on the balcony. There we are. Look at that. What a, what a way to tee off. And that would be so fun. Like, unironically, if I was in this situation, that would be really fun to just tee off from this and just watch the ball sail away. Alas, we cannot watch the ball sail away because it, it doesn't exist with that animation. It's just the Kerbal Swings a Club. Uh, but it's still fun to do. I imagine it would be fun to do nonetheless. Now, I did want to add some patio lights, <laughs> some floor lights to the balcony. But unfortunately, I then realized that you can't actually place them on structural panels. You can only place them on solid ground, I guess, or on top of Easter egg structures like the top of the Mun Arch. That was a bit of a shame, but at least we've got them if I wanted to build some sort of base underneath the arch. Uh, incorporate some sort of elevator system, then we've got them at our disposal. There's a little Kerbal there, enjoying the view. It was meant to be a glass floor, but he's happy just sitting, looking down. I guess it wouldn't be as bad as you'd think it would be, because Mun's gravity is a lot lower than the Moon's gravity in Human Space Program, and the Mun's gravity is very low. I could have just said that, the Mun's gravity is very low. And there are all the Kerbals out on EVS. So it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be like us sitting on Earth. That's, that's what I meant. Anyway, here are all the Kerbals. Did I even say that right? It wouldn't be that bad facing down in a chair like that because the Mun's gravity is low. Yes, we got there in the end. It is a good thing Mun's gravity is low, isn't it? Because during my time trying to get Kerbals out on EVA, one sort of backflipped and knocked another one off. So I had to slow him down before, so he didn't die. And he didn't die. We did get a nice view of the mess we made down here. I probably should have attached the wheels a little bit higher up so that they definitely got destroyed. I might just take Whacker Kerbal to it or whatever it's called. Now, I still call it Whacker Kerbal even though that's not existed for like years. At this point, the object throw a cheat and just use that to destroy that debris. We'll just say it. Um, we built all that stuff out of biodegradable stuff, and it biodegraded on this very uh, inhospitable place with no life. Anyway, there's all our Kerbals out on EVA, having a good time, chilling, mingling. But, you guys, I know what you're thinking. You want to see me drop this base, don't you? Well, I'm not going to. That's sick. I'm not going to do that. Of course, of course, of course, I'm going to do that. Here we are. We're going to just drop the base and uh, and just see what happens. And you know what, guys? I think it held up remarkably well. Look at that. It pretty much stayed intact. Like, obviously, the solar panels are going to get destroyed and a few bits of superstructure. But even the observatory, which I thought would be the first to go on an impact like that, survived. And I'm just going to now say that I did this deliberately. This was perfect. This was by design. I said, I'm going to make sure this base is strong enough so that if the connection to the up top of the arch fails, it'll fall to the ground and withstand the impact and, uh, Oh, but I can't guarantee that a Kerbal won't get decapitated by the looks of things. Uh, this is, uh, marked 18 plus this video. Just, uh, that's, ooh, that's, that's a, that's an injury that, uh, I mean, he's going to need more than a plaster than that, for that. Um, we'll have to just see how he, hopefully he's all right. That Kerbal that's been sort of, oh, oh, it's just, I'm getting a bit upset looking at it. That's horrible. It's just, oh, look at his little legs just twitching. Uh, well, the base is coming to a stop and up. Oh, it was fine. Never mind. He was okay. Uh, Kerbals, they're, they're, they're built out of different... They're built out of a different uh, b building block than people. 
I forgot what the saying is. I just, <laughs> I just noticed that the, the video is pretty much done. I do hope you enjoyed the video, by the way, and hopefully my, whatever this commentary was, served as a nice backdrop to the images on screen. Also on screen, speaking of on screen, there's a list of Patreons scrolling past. Thank you to them. They helped me make this content. Uh, you can also join my channel by clicking the join button below the video if you want to get some cool emojis. Spam in the comments and get a little badge next to your name. There are also two other video suggestions on screen that YouTube thinks you'll like. They're both from my channel. Hopefully they're good pictures. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this was meant to be a space shuttle video, but then the ground ducker came out, so I changed it. So hopefully you're not too mad. Thank you for watching. Space shuttle video probably next week.